Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grace Talk. We're so glad that uh, you are joining us here. Uh, Grace Talk is a, uh, a time here at Grace Chapel where we're going to be doing some uh, interviews with uh, different individuals, different ministers from our church. Again, just a way to get to know one another, to hear one another's heart. So I'm Pastor Ricky, and I welcome you. I'm glad tonight to have uh, Pastor Paul Lane with us. And, hey, good to uh, be here. Paul is a uh, blessed guy. He and his family. I've known Paul probably 25, 30 years. A little bit, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, and uh, you guys have been a part of our church family now for two years or so. Oh, yeah. yeah Going so, on two years. Okay, yeah. so I lose track of time, so I'm yep. glad you uh, <laughs> uh, keep track of it. So, Paul, um, again, you and your family are blessed, talented, and we are so thankful to have you guys to be a part of Grace Chapel. We're glad to be and, here. And uh, <laughs> I tell you, 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 you guys are a talented, blessed family. And so uh, I'm just going to ask you, first of all, to just give us a little brief snapshot of uh, maybe your life, how you came to Jesus, and in the call to ministry. Gotcha. Well, I got saved in 1992. Well, I'd been in church all my life. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to um, going to church and different things. And But in 1992 was really when I sold out. Right. I went to the Pentecostal church for the first time. Scared me, slap half to death. Uh-oh. Uh, didn't know nothing. I mean, there was people shouting, praising the Lord. I said, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, what am I in for? But... When you when you got in and you felt the power of God, it was something that I had never felt before. I mean, because, you know, when you go and not bashing other denominations, but when you go into church and, you know, and you're supposed to be quiet. We had a joke going one time. My brother, it was funny. My brother was bad about going to sleep in church. Uh-huh. And there was a joke one time, wake your brother up. Well, preacher, you put him to sleep, you wake him up, right? <laughs> so that's kind of the that's kind of the premise there. I but hear you. Yeah. yeah. So we got saved in ninety two and then we was having a revival. Uh -huh. And um it wasn't long after that God baptized me in the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, we got called to preach and, you know, we've been preaching, doing revival services, youth services, different things ever since then. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us about Kim and family. Oh yeah. Kim and I, we met, had a preacher friend of mine. We met, Kim and I, he went to preach a revival down in Gastonia. And I met Kim, and what was funny, she tells everybody I didn't know how to flirt. It took me three years to kind of get it up to uh, <laughs> ask her out. We started dating. We got married in 04. And then we had Julia, and then we had Zachary, and then it just, we was praying for the church to grow. We just didn't know it was us. Uh -huh. When they started coming two at a time, that's when we started praying for other folks. Absolutely. So. Yeah, well, that's great. And uh, I, I think, uh, I know Kim sings along yep. with you, plays the drums. Yeah. Uh, Julia sings, Zachary yep. sings. Any yep. other talent of those two boys? Now, uh Alex, he sings. Aiden likes to run from the camera, loves to make people laugh. Uh -huh. um, now, Zachary plays piano a little bit. He's learning. Julia's learning. Julia can play the ukulele. So, you know, that's, you know, Good. so awesome. Well, I know you've, uh, again, as you said, um, felt the call to ministry. Mm -hmm. You've also been a pastor. Uh, yeah. Uh, pastored two different churches. I, I pastored world. Little White Country Church for seven years. Uh -huh. And then... We left there, and we started a church here in Forest City. We pastored it for three. Right. And then we've been coming here, you know, for a couple years or so, been just evangelizing different things. Right. And, uh, you know, our kids love it here. What's funny, I'm going to give a plug to Pastor Scott and Renee, right? Yeah. When we were pastoring, the churches that we pastored were kind of small, mm -hmm. you know, and we didn't have a youth ministry. Aiden hated going to church. Right. And now when we go to sing somewhere or something on a Sunday, he looks at me. He says, why can't y'all go and let me go to our church? Awesome. 
<laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad they love it. That uh, that makes me feel good. Well, being a pastor, being in ministry, uh, I know there's things that have happened that's funny. Things yeah. are embarrassing. I embarrassed myself live here uh, a couple <laughs> days ago. And uh, so, tell me about a time that uh, one of the most embarrassing times of your ministry. One of the most. Oh, we had a visiting preacher mm -hmm. come and preach for us, and I had the keys. I was locking everything up. And we was all standing outside talking, and he came, and lo and behold, I thought he was outside. We had locked him inside in the bathroom, cut every light <laughs> off, and you hear the door beating, and he was saying, let me out of here yes. like a cat. <laughs> we did that to one of our council members one time, and they set the alarm off. That's awesome. Well, how about miracles? What have you saw God do? In the, we the have saw, God has just, we've been, I've been to Africa twice been to Trinidad once. They was a gentleman that came in. They had took him to the Buddhist priest, tried to get him, you know, tried to get him, you know, help, and they really couldn't help him. And they brought him in, and we began to pray for him, not just me, but me and the pastor, friends of mine. And long story short, I mean, he got down in the floor and was crawling like a snake, and, mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, you know, I mean, it's kind of trippy, sure. but God delivered him and, you know, and set him free. There was one little, there was a girl that hadn't, hadn't, couldn't talk and they brought her to service and we prayed for her. And before it was over, I mean, she was able to speak awesome. and we've seen several things, Praise you know, the over the years, but those are just some that kind of stands out, awesome. you know. Yeah. It's wonderful to see God move like that. I'm glad oh. we serve a God, uh, God of miracles. Aren't yes, you? sir. Yes, sir. Well, how about this? I, I know I've, you know, I've been in the ministry now 45 years. I've never made a mistake, but <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'll repent later. Uh, but yeah. but uh, if you look back uh, on your days of ministry, of course, you've got yeah. uh, got many more years ahead of you than I do. But uh, as you look back now, what would you say is the biggest mistake? that you may have made in ministry? The biggest mistake, the hardest part about ministering is not necessarily the preaching part. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you're praying, you're studying. The hardest part about pastoring is learning how to deal with people. Sure. And some of the mistakes that I've made is being all gung-ho and thinking I had to do everything myself. If I, if I didn't do it myself, it wouldn't get done. Sure. And, you know, and sometimes is not listening to people like my wife or different ones that would sure. come. And, and you think, okay, I would do it this way or, you know. But right. like I said, and when you look back on certain stuff, you're going, yeah, I missed that. Gotcha. <laughs> so I, I think that would lead into another question would be, so now looking at your point of ministry now where you're at in the Lord. Yeah. And you look back at young younger Paul, yeah. Uh, when you first uh, answered the call, what would you say to young Paul? Uh, it, I would say, learn. Don't be so. Don't be so wrapped up in the religious part of it, mm -hmm. because people are going to crucify you no matter what you do. I mean, sure. I, I, I used to have a joke when I was preaching. I said, I'm going to make everybody happy. Uh -huh. I'm going to make half of you happy when I get up, half <laughs> of you happy when I sit down. I mean, it's, but I am going to make everybody sure. happy. And, and that's the thing that sometimes the hard part is learning how to be yourself mm -hmm. and learning how to walk in the grace without it being legalism. Absolutely. That, that's, that's the hard part, is learning how to work out your salvation with the Lord and not let it be so legalistic. I understand. And I, and I yeah. still have issues with that. Sure. Yeah. I think we all do. Yeah. Uh, you and I came up somewhat uh, the same way, so I can understand that. I'm glad God's a God of grace, Yeah. that he works on us and uh, gives us time to grow in the Lord. Well, how about uh, a joy? Uh, what's the, when you think about the call of God on your life, the mm -hmm. ability to uh, preach God's word to people, your family to join with you, minister? What would you say is the biggest joy you have? My greatest joy is to see when people get it, mm -hmm. the light bulb goes off. Yes. When when it becomes off of the page, in, in other words, it's not just 
a religious ritual, but when God really becomes real to somebody, and it's not because you know it ain't you. You're sure. you're in the flesh suit, but uh-huh. you know that God uses you, and it touches somebody. I love to encounter the presence of God. Oh, I yes. love seeing our kids, you know, experience. Absolutely. I mean, just yes. like I got so tickled when Zachary and them went to Shabbat, uh-huh. and they come back from Shabbat, and 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 Zachary was telling Kim, he said, you know, I got zapped. Uh-huh. By the Holy exactly. Ghost, and, and and Kim was like, I, and I don't know if I'm saying it exactly right, but she said, well, "Well, what do you mean?" He said, "Well, I felt the power of God. I fell out, and and I was speaking in tongues and everything." And what was funny is Julia. I said, "Well, Julia, what happened to you?" Because you don't want to be prying, mm-hmm. but she said, "Oh, Daddy, I got my prayer language last year," Praise and I was God. and I was like, "What?" You yeah. know, and you didn't know, sure. but it was just. I love seeing not only my kids, but other kids being touched by the presence of God. Absolutely. I can remember going to Shingle Hollow Youth Camp, Mm -hmm. and the power of God was just moving. As a matter of fact, they even closed service out. I've got a cousin. He may be watching this, but it was funny. We was there. And the power of God was still moving so strong. We was praying for people out at the little houses up at Shingle Hollow. Mm-hmm. Had on a brand new pair of blue jeans. His mama wasn't in church then, didn't know nothing about it. He fell out in the power of God, <laughs> fell in a mud hole, ruined them whole brand oh, new wow. yeah. brand new brand new pair of britches. But he was down in he's actually working at the ramp, which is Karen oh, Wheaton's yes. church yeah. down there now. But I mean, just a change in what God has done in him. And that, when you see Mm -hmm. stuff like that, it changes your whole perspective. And what a joy to know that, uh, to see, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Zachary and Julia, that uh, have the impartation of the Holy Spirit in their life, even now as young teenagers, and what a difference that makes in their life. It does. And and the thing about it, in like with coming here, Mm -hmm is being able to minister, to go different places. But because with pastoring, the pressure that's on, and a lot of people that are watching don't realize the pressure that goes. I mean, it's not just the pastor that's in the bubble. His family's in the bubble. And, you know, and and it has been difficult, Mm -hmm. you know. But at the same time, the adjustment period and everything, and, you know, I mean, and God gives grace for that season. Yes. And like I said, we don't know exactly, you know, how the season or whatever. I love preaching. You know, I'd preach it, drop a hat and drop a hat to preach. But sure. that's, I mean, when God saved me, it changed my whole dynamic. Yes. You know, I mean, I love to be doing something. Now, Kim is one of those that loves to be behind the scenes, Mm -hmm. wants to stay out of the spotlight. I'm not trying to be in the spotlight, but yet at the same time, there's been a drive inside of me that, you know, I mean, whether it's playing the tambourine, playing a guitar or whatever, I long to be doing something. That's awesome. Well, that, that I think that would lead me in then to the next question. You talked about, you know, the struggle sometimes and uh, the whole family being under pressure. And for you, not only have you uh, known the pastoral ministry and also mm-hmm. ministry outside the pastoral side, but at the same time, you didn't only had to balance your ministry and your family, but you had to balance your ministry, a job, oh, yeah. and your family. So can well, you speak to and, that? And that's the thing that I think that sometimes that people have a concept of ministry where you're supposed to leave everything. And and like I said, my priorities have always been, and I took a lot of flack for it when I was pastoring. Mm-hmm. The Bible said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Sure. All these things will be added. But my whole lineup, if you will, has been God first, Kim second, the kids third, and then the church and everything afterwards. Yes. And I took a lot of flack when I was pastoring, not down in anybody, sure. but, but this is the thing is I've seen a lot of preachers that have ended up. Yeah, they were a public success, 
but they were a private failure. Absolutely. And I don't want to win the world and lose my family. What what good yes. does that do me? It took me a long time to learn that lesson, so I'm thankful to hear that you've already oh, learned it, that. It, it, it was rough. Yeah. It, it was rough. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to separate. For me, it was to separate ministry from God. Exactly. You know, that, it, that was the that, thing. That's the hard part. Yeah is learning, okay, what is the occupational part of it? And it's not that, you know, and a lot of times people in church don't understand it, you mm -hmm. know, and they will put down, preachers will, you know, he's not putting God first, and it doesn't have anything to do with God. God sure. and the church are two separate things. Yeah. And and that's the that's the hard part to learn and to realize. Absolutely. Let's talk about you for a little bit personally. Uh oh. As far yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, as far as what do you do uh, to 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 relax? How do you uh, not only relax? How tell kind of give us a picture of your prayer, your Bible study life. I am. It drives Kim crazy. Okay. I am not a morning person. I have never been a morning person. I'm the type, my prayer and my Bible study is normally in the evenings after everybody goes to bed, kids are in bed, you know, I'm reading and praying and everything. And, and we have, you know, we was talking about the religious part of it. Sure. Is when Kim and I first got married, and I'm not naming any names, so if you're watching, I love you, okay? But... Uh, we, the church that we went to was real strict. Sure. Okay. They had a prayer time at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. The preacher that we had took that scripture literally, could you not tarry with me one hour? And we was at church and, and, and long story short, we'd go to have prayer time and they thought you're supposed to pray from nine o'clock till 10 o'clock. Uh -huh. Well, I'm the type. I pray, but a lot of times during my prayer, I'm worshiping, you know, sure. I'll, I'll play the piano. And sometimes it's not necessarily what you say. It's, you know, just the attitude behind mm -hmm. it. And so we was at the prayer time, and, and I can remember, I say we don't have fights in our marriage. We have intense moments of fellowship. Sure. Right. So, Kim, if you're watching, I love you, okay? Uh, but uh, <laughs> real simple is I would go and pray, and and she would say, well, why didn't you pray longer? You know, because we were, walking with God is a work in progress. Sure. And I can remember the preacher praying and bless his heart. I mean, I know he loved God. He had a heart for God, but he didn't really understand the grace part. And he was up there praying, and he said, he said, Lord, would you help Brother Paul pray for an hour? Help him touch him, Jesus. And I'm sitting here thinking in my mind, I'm saying, Lord, is he talking to me or is he talking to you? Uh -huh. sure. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing is that you've got to realize, yeah, there is works and yeah, there's things that we do, but God's grace is not based on what we do. It's based on who we are. Yeah, and I think we all have different personalities. There's ways that, yeah. um, you know, uh, and I think God, uh, we don't have to apologize to God for our personalities because yeah. I think they were given by God, shaped by life. And uh, so, so yeah, well, how about relaxing? Kim would probably say I need to relax more, <laughs> okay, because I am a control freak. Don't mean to be. That's just the way that I am. And, and I guess that's one thing that I've always had trouble with. But to relax, I love to just sit down at a piano just to worship some. And then I love to go fishing. Love yeah. to just get out, you know, put the phone up, you know, get out and just take a chill pill, so to speak. Awesome. Because you, you have to have a release. Sure. You have to have a way. Because if you don't, it's like, Mama had a pressure cooker. Uh -huh. That thing would build up and go, and then when it had enough, it'd say, right. right. And there's a lot of times that I feel like that people are about to blow up because they don't have no release. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid to really let God see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sure. And, and, and that's the thing is, I'm not saying that we need to go and be disrespectful to God, but yet at the same time, God, you need to be real with God. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to God from your heart. And that's what I would encourage people, those that are watching, is talk to God from your heart. Don't, 
Yes, he's God. That's uh-huh. his title. But the Bible said that the Holy Spirit would plant it in our heart, Absolutely. Abba. Abba. And, 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 that's the, and that's the thing is God is what he does, uh-huh. but Abba is who he is. He's God. I'm glad he's Abba Father. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's, it, for me, there's people in my life that uh, I feel like have invested into me. Absolutely. People that, um, you know, I love to, to hear their wisdom from God. To, Absolutely. Tell me about some folks in your life that have mentored. Or... I had a preacher friend of mine that really kind of took me under his wing. Mm-hmm. His name was Preacher Junior Morris. Absolutely. Loved, yes. him, loved him to death. I, I got tickled. We would go out. We would take two-hour sessions going looking for deer. Uh-huh. But most of the time it was talking about ministry, about going right. different places, about what to do, what not to do, about... And, and like I said, and he always said, he said, Paul, if you have a good church service, he said, there's going to be times that you come in and you're going to have great services. Mm-hmm. But he said, if you can have a good service and good, friendly people, that's the thing that's going to cause a church to grow. Yes. People like going where they like to go. Yeah. And, and yeah, there is a balance and yeah, you got to preach, you know, certain stuff, but you got to love people. And but he was one and he always liked to cut up. Oh, yeah. uh, always liked to pull something. We went in a restaurant with a friend of ours. We was eating after revival one night and he asked a waitress, he said, Are you married? She said, No, sir, I ain't. Well he ain't neither. Maybe y'all could hook up. And I said <laughs> and it was a friend of mine, but he was all the time pulling something. No. But you you gotta have fun with it. Absolutely. I've never uh Never went deer hunting with uh, Brother Junior. I did play golf with him. Ah. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, when you, as far as ministry, um, would you rather do a funeral? Would you rather do a wedding? Oh, I, honestly, that was the thing that I hated doing because I mean, and it's something that went along with it because the now the weddings. Oh, that was that was the piece of cake. Uh, because it was aggravating at times, the you know, because you had to make sure everything was good, the pre-counseling, and you felt like, well, if people did end up getting divorced, did I mess up <laughs> when I did sure. it? But, you know, it wasn't really that. It was about, but the funerals, that that was the hard part. Sure. Because you're trying to, one of the nuggets that I always got from Preacher Junior and so he said, Paul, he said, don't go in there and, and preach 30, 45 minutes at a funeral. Certainly. He said, you know, he said, people are hurting. He said, you're not preaching, you know, to, he said, that person's already preached her funeral. Right. He said, you're really going in there to comfort the family, That's to right. help the family. That's good wisdom. And, and, and it, and it is hard mm-hmm. when somebody's going through that valley of the shadow of death. It is hard. And you're trying to be the mouthpiece of God. You're trying to be in the place of God, to, to be the physical form mm-hmm. of God to help people. Sure. So how about the least favorite thing in ministry? Uh, the least favorite thing in ministry is... De- for a lack of a better term, just dealing with people who think that they know everything. Surely not. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I love people. If you're watching, I love you. But you get people, and, and they, they forget that we are, yeah, we're pastors, but we're people too. And, you know, and and you know, it's hard sometimes separating the anointing, you can see the anointing mm-hmm. on somebody. A lot of people love the anointing, but they hate the humanity of sure, somebody. Absolutely. And they don't realize that the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen earth vessels. And, vessels, right. and, that, and that's, the, that's the hard part. Everybody has the flaws. I had a aunt, and I love Aunt Sherry if she's watching, but, but they used to, she got saved, her husband got saved. They would travel from Gastonia to our church every Sunday. They'd stay over with us in between services. And I'm bad to say, sometimes I get tired. I'll leave my socks on the floor, or coat hangers on the door. And she couldn't handle the humanity. Well, you're supposed to be perfect. Nah, perfect. <laughs> I mean, you know, it doesn't work like that. But sure. that's, the, that's the hard part. Have you ever thought about quitting? 
Yes, I have. I mean, I've been through, there have been times in my ministry mm -hmm. that literally have rocked me to my core. Absolutely. Liter literally have rocked me. I mean, and, and there's been, there's been some things and, and that's the thing like with the kids is I've heard of a lot of preachers, kids that are bitter toward God mm -hmm. because people don't realize, you know, kids are kids, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you can't, the kids see the good side of ministry, but they also see the ugly side too. Yes. And I have thought about quitting, but when you get to that point and you feel like giving up, and that's how I know it's not of me. Sure. Is because if it was me, if it was an ego issue, if it was something that I was just wanting to do, mm -hmm. I'd have quit a long time ago. There's a grace that's been imparted to you. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a divine... Like Jeremiah said, he said, it's like fire showed up in your bones. In other words, you feel that desire, that drive, and you don't know. You're like, okay, I'm done. Jeremiah said, I'm done. I don't want no more. And he said it was like fire. Absolutely. And, and you feel that drive because there's people that need God. Absolutely. And, and the ministry has evolved, you know, because when, you, when you've when you pastored for 10 years, you know, mm -hmm. in and out, preach Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and then all of a sudden, you're not pastoring, you feel weird. Yeah. You, you, you feel like going, okay, well, what am I doing? <laughs> I understand. Well, I think you gave me a good uh, um, transition into the probably the final question. We've got uh, two minutes left. Okay. Um, when you look at your future, yeah. hopes, dreams, what do you see? I would, me personally, I love pastoring. Mm hmm. Now, with my family, it's been rough because, you know, I don't want anything on on them. And I'm just waiting. I love preaching. I love ministering. I love seeing the presence of God mm -hmm. literally touch people and people get their life changed and, and everything. And there's been a divine drive, so to speak, mm -hmm. for people that don't know the Lord to really come. There's a lot of people, Pastor, that's been hurt in church, been hurt by religion. And I, and I want to say for those of you that are watching, if you've been hurt by church or whatever, sometimes God's kids don't act like God's kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. And, and you've got to realize that sometimes that just because people hurt you, don't mean that God's hurt you. Absolutely. And you've got to let God begin to really pour that oil in you and begin to get healed. And sometimes we're afraid to show our scars. So if I could sum it up, you just want to be the hand of God so that those folks that are hurting, yeah. that need some love, need the anointing oil of God, the oh, yes. balm of Gilead, that God could use you. Well, Paul, thank you for uh, yeah. taking uh, this time with us. We love, again, you and your family. We're mm. so thankful to have you a part of our Grace Chapel family. And uh, we hope that it's forever. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But we also know the call and the plans of God. And uh, yeah. so we're just uh, we're just in this journey together, Amen. walking together. But thank you for opening up. Let folks hear your heart tonight. Talk a little yeah. bit more. And I, I know we could have uh, talked a, a lot longer. <laughs> uh, but uh, but thank you so much. Yeah. I love you, buddy. I love you, too. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Well, again, thanks tonight for being a part of Grace Talk. We love you. And uh, we'll be back again with another, another member of our Grace Chapel family. So blessings to you and to your family.